Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning and welcome to Bethel. It's our second week in our Choices series. Our choices directly impact the quality of our lives. I've done a lot of weddings, and I know this. Nobody gets up for their wedding and says, I can't wait to mess this up that no one receives their degree or their diploma and says, I can't wait till I lose my first job. No one looks forward to wrecking their children or ruining their lives. And yet we constantly see a stream of places where this seems to occur. You see, sometimes intention is not enough. And if we want to become what God has called us to be, it takes some intentionality and some pre-deciding. It takes knowing what our values are. For instance, when it comes to my work and much of my life, there are some values that I really want to carry out. I, I want to be, I want to be ready. I, I don't want to be unprepared. I don't want to be poorly prepared for any moment. I know that things can come my way. And when they do, I want to seize the opportunity. I want to be consistent. I want to live a devoted life, a generous life, a faithful life, and, and I want to be a finisher. I, I don't just want to start things and not complete them. Today, I want to talk a little bit about being ready in life. That so often temptation and things come our way, opportunities too can come our way, and we not be prepared for them. And I want to talk about how we can predecide in order to keep from making poor decisions. Because if no one intends to trash their marriage, run their relationships, damage their kids, and yet it still happens, it should tell us that, that maybe in the heat of a moment, in, a, in an opportunity, we can blow it up by making bad decisions. And, and the way, the number one way that we fight the temptation is to be prepared for it. That when we are faced with a specific situation, we know already what we're going to do. Last week, we talked about the fact that with more decisions, offer, often comes a lower quality of decision. Having pre-made our decisions can set us up in a moment where we can damage our life or damage others by sin. It can set us up to be prepared to avoid the kinds of sin that ruins lives, damages children, hurts our marriages. And so we're spending a few weeks here talking about how we can predecide some things that protect our life, protect our witness, and carry on God's mission more effectively. So we pre-decide. The way that we are ready is to pre-decide that we won't be unprepared. And if we pre-decide that we won't be unprepared, it means that we have to be intentional about being prepared. You see, when our values are clear, our decisions are easier. 
1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 says this, be on your guard, be prepared, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong. You're only on guard if you believe something can attack. Paul is telling the Corinthians to be on guard. He's telling them because there is the potential for attack, that one of the ways that we deal with temptation is to be prepared for it. The reality is temptation will come. And we're not often as strong as we think in withstanding temptation. Matthew 26, 41 says this, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Meaning it is very capable for us to fall to temptation if we're not prepared for it. Three keys you need to remember, a couple keys you need to remember as you travel, trying to follow Jesus and trying to live a life, accomplishing the goals and, the, and living out the values that you have. Number one, you have an enemy. There is an enemy to the kingdom of God. And the enemy tries to steal, kill, and destroy. Paul said it like this in 2 Corinthians. He said, I wrote to you, and he, he says, this is why. So that Satan will not outsmart us, for we're familiar with his evil schemes. He's just clarifying that we do have an enemy who wants to get us off track. That there is a tension pulling us away from what is good and what is right. And that we will have that enemy. And just because we are following Jesus, or even if you're not, you will be tempted. We're also often not as smart as we are think or as strong as we think when it comes to recognizing temptation. Paul says this, he says, so if you think you're standing firm, be careful you don't fail, that you don't fall. It's dangerous to think you can't fall. I promise you, you are capable of doing things that you don't think you are. That when under pressure, when your values are challenged, you're capable of making the kinds of decisions that can destroy your life. And if you aren't prepared to answer to that temptation, you can fall. I, I, I've literally sat across my desk from numerous people who've shared that they've done things they never thought they would. If most of the rest of us were honest, we would say that falling into temptation has led us to places and doing things that we never thought we would do. Things we thought we could withstand, somehow we wound up doing. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Three keys to fighting temptation this morning. Number one, remember that there is this restraint bias that we have that makes us think that we can withstand more temptation than we really can. We have this temptation to walk right up to the line of what's wrong and say, I'm fine to stand here. I I would never step over the line. But life bumps us, or we stop paying attention to where we're standing, or some hard circumstances happen, and we can find ourselves sinning in a way we never intended to. So how do we fight temptation? Number one, we move the line. Now, In Scripture, God initially hands Ten Commandments. He gives the commandments to the people. And then over time, the people recognize the devastation that happened and the loss of freedom that happened when they began to disobey those things. And so religious leaders tried to do something that eventually became a heavy burden but was intended to keep the people free. They began to set what I would call guardrail commandments. Commandments that would keep you from the the actual commandment. That rather than not lying or not stealing, we didn't go places where we would be tempted to lie or steal. And they would set all of these things out and these measures in place so they didn't sin. And, and, And honestly, it can become overly cumbersome, but the reality is we have to remember God's laws were never intended to imprison us or hold us back, they were always intended to keep us 
free. And sometimes we need to move the line. You see, if you've ever traveled mountain roads and notice guardrails, the guardrails are not set in a place that that damage will happen. You, you know, if your car goes into a guardrail, it might be damaged. If it goes over the side of the mountain, you will likely die. And so in an effort to keep people from death, they put guardrails so that people won't go over the line. And yes, many people, you will often drive by guardrails and see marks where people have run up against the guardrail. And you're like, man, that has to really be horrible to wreck into the guardrail, or that has to be an awful thing to have hit the guardrail. But we often neglect the fact that the guardrail may have saved them from going off the mountain. For many of us, we could move the line when it comes to the places we're vulnerable to be tempted and say, before I get to the place where I'm tempted, I'm going to stop. I'm going to set a mark before that spot. That's where I draw the line. If you know you're weak or vulnerable in an area, move the line. If there's a constant spot where you're tempted into sin, set a line long before it. So that even hitting the line makes you uncomfortable. I can't tell you how many people over the years I've counseled who had no guardrail and all of a sudden found themselves in a free fall. They weren't paying attention and all of a sudden they were someplace they never thought they would go doing something they never thought they would do and now in a situation they never wanted to be in. David said it like this in Psalm 16, 6, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. And surely I have a delightful inheritance. What he was saying was, it's better to be on this side of the boundary line significantly than to be on the other side of the Lord. Number two, we need to magnify the cost. Now, I, I don't necessarily love negative thinking or worst case scenario thinking. But I think sometimes when it comes to temptation, we don't realize the devastation that can come from sin. That one choice of sin can lead to years of damage in a child. That one, one stop of sin can lead to massive family devastation and pain. And the reality is that sometimes if we would just make sure that as temptation comes our way, that we weigh the cost. We're tempted in temptation to say, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But often things that are not a big deal can become a huge deal. What if the worst case scenario comes through? What, what if you do get found out? What if people do know? What if you do find it hard to connect to God because you've been walking away from him. Th those are worst case scenarios of sin. Those are the kinds of things that sin do. And ultimately, sin distances us from the one person who can lead us and guide us through our life effectively. That we begin to draw a distance between us and God. And maybe if we would look at a situation and magnify the cost rather than diminish the cost, what like, it's probably not going to be a big deal. It might be correct to say it could, become a, it could become a big deal. Numbers chapter 32 verses 23 points out the biggest deal. It says, you will be sinning against the Lord and you may be sure that your sin will find you out. The reality is whatever is in the dark always comes to the light. And so magnifying the potential cost can be effective in helping us avoid temptation. Number three, plan your escape. If you're going to possibly be in a situation that could tempt you in a spot where you're, you're vulnerable, for instance, for instance, I avoid huge crowds. Huge crowds amp me up. Big traffic amps me up. Walking around in a big city, it amps me up. If it's your thing, it's your thing. It's not my thing. And one of the reasons it's not my thing is in the middle of a big crowd in an anxious moment, I've been known to overreact in my past. I've been known to explode and blow up. 
to get bumped into and overreact. And so I know not to be in those spots, but I also know when it's getting to be too much, if you see me disappear out of a busy room, it's because I'm overwhelmed and I just know I can't be at my best there. And I have the potential to do things I regret if I don't plan and escape. For instance, I don't stay in a room with someone who's yelling at me. It's just something I won't do. Could I probably handle it at 44 years old? Probably. But the reality is the potential for an explosion and the potential for me to get angry and lose my mind could do so much more damage than to just be out of the situation and I plan the escape. Listen, I have a deal. So you start raising your voice to me, we'll talk another time. Talk another time. I don't, I don't do it because I know the potential it has. And so I plan to escape. I'm always ready to leave if I need to leave. There's a story in Genesis 39 that lives this out very well. It's the story of Joseph. Joseph seems to be a man who's prepared to do the right thing. Over and over throughout his story, you can see these moments where despite temptations and places he might be tempted, Joseph walks away from things that could have been potentially devastating to his witness, to his future, and even for the people of God. Joseph had been sold by his brothers and God had protected him and looked after him for a period of time. But he came into a place working for Potiphar as one of the key leaders of his day. And it says Joseph was very handsome and a well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. So Potiphar's wife's kind of direct. I don't know if Joseph hadn't gotten it before, hadn't noticed it, hadn't recognized it. But here he is, a handsome young man, away from all accountability. Potiphar wasn't around, away from all these spots. And this wealthy, powerful woman has called to him to come to bed with her. Joseph is in a place of temptation. Why do you think Joseph was prepared? Do you think Joseph was different than everyone else? That Joseph wasn't tempted by it? Or had Joseph predecided that there were certain things he wasn't going to do? That while he was serving under Potiphar, he was going to honor Potiphar, and it wouldn't have been honoring to Potiphar for him to sleep with Potiphar's wife. That while he was serving Potiphar, he was going to be serving God by maintaining his values as, as a follower, as one of God's people. So Joseph had pre-decided what he would do in certain circumstances that took him outside of his core values. You know, Joseph could have been in a spot where he said, you know what? I've gone through some things. My brother sold me. I've experienced all kinds of heartache in my life. I've been away from my family. I've lost friends. And I'm disappointed and so by all means, I should just do whatever I feel like. I don't know about you, but one of the great temptations for me is when I'm disappointed in how life is going to then give myself some justification for why it's not a big deal. But the reality is it is a big deal. And if we run to our disappointments rather than to dis and we run to God in our disappointment, he can handle it far better than for us to disobey. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 12, it says, She had grabbed his cloak, and he literally left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. You see, Joseph knew in his heart and valued the value of his name and the value of his character over the quality of his coat. Joseph was willing to look awkward, be in a weird spot in order to keep his character. Sometimes setting boundaries is something people don't understand. Oh, why are you so worried about it? But the reality is, 
as a parent, we would love for our kid to stop way before they got to a place of compromise. And the same is true for us, and the same is true for God's wishes for us. He left his cloak in her hand. Paul said it this way, God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Meaning we can be prepared for temptation. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. The way out is being prepared. I don't know about you, but I really don't want to wing it when it comes to temptation. I don't want to wing it that I might have a weak moment and step into a place that I shouldn't and step into a situation that I shouldn't. And so I set boundaries and sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes people don't understand it. I think Potiphar's wife wouldn't have thought it was a big deal for Joseph to stay a little longer. But Joseph knew he needed to leave. Here's a question I have for you. Why would I resist a temptation in the future under pressure that I have the power to eliminate today without the pressure? While I'm not yet tempted, if I settle once and for all, that's where I draw the line. Where are you vulnerable in your life right now? What's that place where you're dancing with the line of, is this wrong or right? Should I or shouldn't I? Is it really that big of a deal? Where are you vulnerable? Where are the places where you have stepped into sin in the past and you have the potential to step there forward? How can you, how can you draw a line and plan an escape in order to glorify God? who's willing to sustain us through all those temptations. Bethel, I hope you have a great week, but I hope you also take a moment to ask God honestly, God, where am I stepping into trouble? Where, where is my potential, God, to step into trouble? And listen to the Holy Spirit's prompting and maybe plan an escape and maybe move the line so that you can avoid the devastation no one ever intends to fall into. I love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, Take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages from Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give with online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.